two more minutes. He tell me, well, two more minutes. I'm like, well, two more minutes. You say something that I ain't gonna say, like. All right, what's going on, everybody? This is like a kind of an impromptu video. Uh, we are doing wax ups because, you know, that's what we're doing. So I got my waxing machine right here, right out of the frame. Dental form, uh, prep teeth all the carving tips, tools right here, and I need a mechanical pencil. Got my pencil. All right, I'm good to go. So basically, let me come back up for a second. At, it, right now it's 2.55. At three o'clock, my professor's gonna log on to a live session. In that session, he will show us how to wax up tooth. I think he said we're doing a premolar. So it's gonna be either, I don't know if it's upper or lower. We're gonna find out, but you know, take you on as I go. And uh, so I'm gonna put some clips of me following along as he shows us how to do the wax up. And then once he's done talking, I am going to finish my wax up for today's lab while also doing a story time. Today's story time is going to be about how I was not accepted into dental school on the very first day. The reason I wanted to tell this story, you know what, I need to fix this glare, hold on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna preface this story by saying a little bit of background and why I'm deciding to tell this story as I do my wax up. So, excuse me. So last year, dental school decisions came out on December 15th, 2020. December 15, 2020. At this point in the, pro in the application cycle, I had only interviewed at one school Boston University. Um, I interviewed at BU pretty early, like early September, like probably like the first week or first two weeks of September. And like, I was like so confident that I was gonna get in on the first day, waiting to hear, waiting to hear back. Um, and I didn't, long story short, I didn't hear back on the first day. And I'll kind of take you through all of that when I tell the full story, but when I didn't hear back the first day, um, I was devastated because that was the only school I had interviewed with pre-December. Uh, judging from my interview, I thought I had a pretty good shot of getting in. And now that I did not get into the one school that I heard from, I started to enter panic mode a little bit. And I tried to find anybody in the world that was in a similar situation to me and it felt like I couldn't find anybody bro it's like every dental school student that I knew got in on the first day and didn't know how I was feeling so this one is for the people that feel the way that I did on December between December 15th 2020 and whenever I got my first acceptance which was maybe like January 15th or so, some, I don't know, some around then sometime. <laughs> so we got the live stream. It's a Friday time. afternoon. Do you want me to leave this up so you can meet yourself? Yeah, that'd be great. So if you want to, yeah, you can All my stuff. Turn it on. All right, so like I said, I will start exactly at three, which is three o'clock. So here we go. So now we're talking about posterior teeth.
take our number seven wax spatula. I forgot my dye. And remove loop. any wax that has gone Stunts. beyond that margin. So some wax might stick to other stuff, bro. And I'm just gonna have to scrape it off. My dye lube is at school though, so. You know how that should go. Running through the six with my woe. Now we should be able to place the preparation. Okay, I'm back. So in the midst of watching my professor explain how to do the wax up for this tooth, I realized that I am missing dye lubricant, which is pretty important. We use that to put on the surrounding teeth um, so that the wax doesn't stick to the teeth we don't want it to stick to. It's not the biggest deal because you can just scrape it off, but um, it does make it a little inconvenient. I'm also missing uh, like a hemis not a hemostat. Well, yeah, a hemostat or some forceps. Um, it's kind of hard to get this tip off, and um, you also can't really like touch it with your bare hands because. It's heated up to 215 degrees right now, so I'm not trying to burn myself. Um, so I can't change the tips, but we're still going to wax. We're going to work with what we got, and I'm going to tell this story because that's, that's the most important part of this video. Um, I think... Now, I'm still going to work on this premolar, but... Uh, it's not gonna be the easiest task. Also, okay, also loops, nah. We are gonna bear, you know what? Before one of my professors like come, stumbles across this video or something, I don't know. I'm not trying to get in trouble with the school, man. I'm, I'm be making these videos, but yeah. A little instrumental of uh, one of my favorite songs right now. All right, so yeah, let's talk about how, let's talk about last year's application cycle and how that went for me. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, before December 15th, which was the first day that acceptances went out last year, I had not heard back from any schools. Uh, wait, 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 sorry. I had only interviewed at one school. And uh, when December 15th rolled around, I did not hear back from the one school I interviewed at. So I'm sure anyone that uh, is applying to dental school or that watches my channel that's in dental school, you know that that uh, you know, that first day when dental school applicate acceptances come out um, is a very like anxiety inducing day. You sit there by your phone waiting for some admissions officer to call you and let you know that you've gotten into their school. Um, I need to turn this down a little more. So, you know, you sit there and you kind of you kind of wait for any type of admissions officer to send you an email or call your phone. If you get in on the first day is nine times out of ten, it's going to be a phone call because you like the first pick, you know, first round draft pick. But, you know, 
if you have friends that are in the application cycle, it takes it a step further because then you're like, man, like they're getting in, they're texting you the moment they hear back from any school. They're like, yeah, man, I, I'm so excited, blah, blah, blah. And you're kind of just like, I'm happy for you. That's what's up. However, I'm down bad right now. You, you feel me? You get, you get what I'm saying, right? So you're like, I'm down bad right now. So that's kind of how that was going for me. And so anyway, fast forward to maybe like a couple days later. So let's call it December 20, 20th. Let's say December 20th, right? Uh, it probably was before that, but I reached out to BU and I'm like, uh, you know, I didn't hear back from you guys and I'm really interested in coming here. So, you know, I'm still, uh, still interested, waiting to hear back. Um, and, you know, I can't wait to hear from you all. That's it. You know, nothing crazy. You don't want to beat down their email address and phone number because they're busy, you know. But, you know, I just wanted to make sure I expressed that interest. Especially for those people out there that, you know, get anxious about things like that. Feeling like, you know, you're going to get left off bad and bougie. Something like that. Um... I understand like how it can feel. Uh, but yeah, anyway, keep going. So uh, after that, things kind of took a turn. Uh, soon after the New Year's, I think it was like right around New Year's, this wax up is going along really bad. I'm going to take it all off. So soon around the new years the dean of admissions at the time dr david russell passed away unfortunately due to a battle with cancer and um that kind of shook things up in the application process for this thing smoking Turn this off, man. That kind of shook things up in the application process for, you know, basically everyone who didn't get in on the first day. And so things started to get a little delayed. Essentially, time was passing. Time was passing. Time was passing. Uh, we're now getting to around mid-January. Uh, I started to become I wouldn't say like I started to become hopeless but basically like you know naturally between December 15th the first day and uh when I don't even remember exactly what day I got in but I have my acceptance letter so I can look at the date um but between that between those days right I was starting to lose hope I'm like, bruh, I haven't heard back from no schools. I haven't gotten into the one school I did hear back from. What do I do? You know what I'm saying? I'm starting to get to the point of, damn, let me look into finishing this master's from my post bag program so I can apply again with a better, you know, better resume, better degrees, better GPA. You know, I'm already, I'm already giving up hope. I'm already looking at plan B. <sighs> Self-doubt is a, a mother. But anyway, let's keep going. So, uh, you know, I actually literally on this day in the morning, I woke and, you know, it, it got, it got to the point where every day. Every day, I was checking my email like once an hour. <laughs> Literally like once an hour, just hoping something would come through. So one day I woke up and I went on my church's website. And my church has 
uh, like a prayer request uh, kind of form that you can submit on the website. I lie to you not. I lie to you not. God is watching. I submitted a prayer request in the morning. I forget exactly what day it is, but let's say it was January. Let's call it January 20th. I should really look up what day I got it. <laughs> I know it was in January. I don't remember the date. But the morning, this day in the morning, right? And this is not the day that I got in. But this, this specific day in the morning, I submitted a prayer request to my church. The prayer request did not ask for dental school acceptance. It didn't really ask for anything but guidance in my journey and more kind of like more uh, confidence in myself. I just wanted, you know, I just wanted something to keep me going. That's all I really wanted. So that same day that I submitted, I lied to you not, the same day that I submitted the prayer request, I got an interview invitation. I remember I was I was working in a lab at the time. I was doing some work like away from my desk and I also wasn't really on my phone. I remember coming back to my desk for like a late lunch, grabbing my phone and I see an email from VCU. So I'm like, oh, what's this? It says you've been invited for an interview. Oh, the same day I submitted the prayer request. Crazy. I'm like, hallelujah. Like, I'm telling my parents, telling my sister, telling my girlfriend, like, finally something happened. Like, I got another chance. I got an interview. Like, I'm not going to blow it. Um, I go get my lunch. I come back from lunch. Bring, bring, bring. My phone is ringing. Hello? It's Dr. Dunham. For those who don't know, I am making some money in the market today. Hold on. Okay, so for those who don't know, right, Dr. Dunham is uh, the Assistant Dean of Diversity and Inclusion at BU. Uh, and he's also the person that interviewed me. And... Bring, bring, bring. Dr. Dunham's calling. Hello. Dr. Dunham has like this very calming voice, very like monotone, smooth voice. Hello. Like, it's like, I don't know. Like <laughs> when Dr. Dunham calls you, it's like he's like he's talking to a sneaky link. He like, Hello. That's not even how he sounds, bro. Hello? I, don't, I can't do Dr. Dunham's voice, but anybody that knows Dr. Dunham knows exactly what I'm talking about. So he calls me. He's like, yeah, um, you know, I just got out of a meeting with the admissions committee. You know, he's very like, I wouldn't even say he's soft spoken. I just don't know how to describe it. But people who know Dr. Dunham know what I'm talking about. So basically, Dr. Dunham proceeds to tell me that, um, you know, Within a few days, I should be getting accepted to be you. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. I, you know, I literally just put the prayer request in this morning. I just got an interview for VCU. And now, as soon as I respond to the interview invitation, I get a phone call from Dr. Dunham. So he's like, yeah, in a few days, you know, you should, you should get um, something in the email. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, bet. Great. But you know. I'm excited, but I'm like not trying to be too excited till I see that till I see that acceptance because between September and December, this was my excitement level. So I've already been given my slice of humble pie. You know, I'm, I've already been brought back down from the moon down back to Earth. You know what I mean? So I'm like, OK, cool. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Hang up the phone. Next thing on my mind is okay. I gotta kill this VCU interview because I need to get I need to get in somewhere. You know what I mean? So, um, I scheduled the interview for like a week out. 
maybe or like yeah like a week out whatever day worked best for me to be able to come into work late <sighs> excuse me you guys are gonna see me yawn on camera sometimes you know why i'm tired let's start waxing again okay so yeah so i'm like okay i gotta kill this interview because i might not get in somewhere let's get back to waxing since the story is finishing up um so I'm like, you know, let me hit up some people, see if I can find someone that goes to VCU that can, you know, give me pointers about my interview. And I, you know, I talked to a few people. Before I even got to the day of my interview, I got another call from Dr. Dunham. He said, congratulations, you've been accepted to Boston University, Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine. The, the email came basically as soon as we got off the phone. I'm ecstatic. I'm like, finally, I got in somewhere. Um, the whole time, BU was pretty much my number one school. It was going to be hard for any other school to beat BU unless it was like a location thing so obviously like BU is not a cheap school if I got into Maryland which is a good dental school and also like a third of the price because I'm from Maryland and that's an in-state school for me you know that would have been a no-brainer but yeah this was the school I was waiting to hear from so I end up taking my VCU interview and, uh, you know, it was kind of just like a, see if I could get like a competing offer and maybe like get more money out of BU or something. Um, it's kind of like the only reason I did it after I had already gotten to VU. I mean, BU. But essentially, I was not a fan of my VCU interview. It didn't really like, the interview wasn't good. Like, didn't seem like they were really interested in me being there. You know, you really got to feel out the schools when you're interviewing there, just like how they're feeling you out. And I felt like it wasn't the school for me in short. I'll keep it that way. So I, you know, did the interview and I was like, time to put my deposit down at BU. Now, this is not the end of the story. Well, that's kind of the end of the story, but... I want to finish off by saying a few things that I needed to hear when I was in this position last year. If you're watching this video, you're either in that in that position this year, nosy in my business, or no, I'm joking. <laughs> but if you're watching this video, then you know you're probably in that same position and kind of want to hear like a piece of advice, some encouragement, or something like that. Um, essentially, man, be patient. And I say that because after I got, literally after I got into BU and after I did my VCU interview, the interviews got to rolling in crazy, like all the way up until I think I was still getting interview invitations in March. And granted, like, you know, the longer along you go the harder it's going to be to get into the school, even if you do interview. But I got an interview at NYU. Like, that was like the next interview I got. Or maybe Howard was next. One of those were next. And then Meharry as well. NYU, Howard, Meharry. And then I got an interview at Tufts for a pre-dental non-degree program. to Basically an interview to be in their class of 2026. Um, by this time, I basically denied every interview because I think I was so turned off by the VCU interview when I was already basically committed to another school by then that I was like, man, I'm not wasting my time with it. And I, you know, I would have kept having to take off of work. It just wasn't really worth my time. So I decided not to take the interviews. Um, do I regret that? No. Would I advise anyone else to do that? No. Take all the interviews. You never know how one school may sway you. You never know what kind of money a school will offer you. 
You never know. But I kind of was at the point where I was exhausted, um, fatigued from Zoom interviews. I just didn't feel like going through that process again and again and again, knowing that the chances of me flipping after I already paid a $3,000 deposit at BU was slim to none. So my wax heated up. So what is the purpose of this video? The purpose of this video, well, to be honest, this video is just for anyone that's looking for it. Anyone that is still in the application cycle, still waiting to hear back from a school, still waiting to get an interview, still, just anybody that is still, this video is for you, you know? And hopefully this video and my channel is enough motivation for you to feel like January 14th, 2021 is not the end of your book, you know? There's still going to be another page in your book. Your story is still being written. There's still plenty of time for you to get into dental school this year. There's still plenty of application cycles for you to get into dental school another year. I know that might not be what you want to hear, but I just want you to know that your story is still being written. So anyway, if you watched all the way through this video, drop a comment, leave some love under the video for me. I really appreciate it. If you have any other questions, drop a comment. Maybe one day I'll actually do this wax with me thing and actually wax. But I just got kind of carried away with the story. I apologize. This isn't even this isn't even like trying to work for me right now. Um, but yeah. Thank you for watching the video. Drop a comment, leave a like, do whatever you may please. I appreciate you watching. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.